Welcome to Bold Guy DIY. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use electronics in order to make your very own LED button puzzle for an escape room project. I love escape rooms and I keep coming up with ideas to how to make an escape room puzzle of my own. You might have seen the DIY Cryptex I did before. This time I was thinking about different button combinations and how when you press a button and it lights up and and then the next one and the next one, how exciting that is as an escape room solver. So I came up with this logic puzzle that uses lighted arcade buttons and really does a great job of testing the user's ability to problem solve or could be used with a code found somewhere else in the room. Let's get started. For the wiring of this project, I'm using some small gauge electronic wire, some LED arcade buttons, and some crimp-on spade connector. I'm using an Arduino Nano and a shield for the Arduino that includes a bunch of terminals. The first thing I did was 3D print a panel that all the arcade buttons are going to mount into and printed it out. Next I decided to try wrapping the panel in vinyl to see if I would remove the texture of the 3D print and give it a more finished look. Simply place it on the back of the vinyl, cut away the excess, and then wrapped around the edges to give it a more finished appearance. The vinyl stuck very well to the front side, not as well to the back side, which is a little bit rougher, but you'll see as I install the buttons, there is a way for those edges to be pinned down. Trimmed away the corners for the overlap so it makes a much smoother finished corner. And I got a really nice, clear, uh, smooth surface that you can't see very well on camera, but I'll have to take my word for it. It's nice and clean and looks great. Now I simply cut out the holes with a craft knife and I'm left with a very nice looking panel that's very easy to insert the button. I insert all the buttons and use the locking nut to secure them in place. And as those locking nuts are going down, they're also trapping the edges of the vinyl so that it's nice and secure, it's not gonna come undone. And what I didn't show here is that I did also uh, line up all the terminals later on so that they're all facing the right way. And there is the finished installation. Now on the Arduino, I'm simply going to connect little jumper wires with connectors on each end. I connected one side of every switch and the negative side of every LED together, and those are all gonna connect to the ground pin on the Arduino. So you can see it goes from switch to LED, switch to LED across all the different buttons. Now I'm simply gonna connect them in order. First I'm doing the switches here, starting with A0, going to the first one, then A1, A2, and so on. Once I have all of the switches in place, I'm now gonna go and hook up all of the LEDs, and those are digital pins two through seven. So I start with two, going to the first one, then three, then four, and so on. You need to make sure that you connect the accompanying pin to the switch so that they're not getting mixed up. This is the code that I use to program on the Arduino IDE. You'll see at the beginning, I have declared all of the buttons one through six and all of the LEDs one through six. Then in the setup loop, I declared all of the buttons to be inputs with pull up as the state pulling up to high and then all of the LEDs to be output. In the loop, I then read all of the values of the buttons and store their input to button state variables that determines whether or not the button is being pushed or not. Next, I begin the actual logic. So until a button is pushed, or I should say until the button one is pushed, uh, nothing happens. When the button is pushed, the LED lights and the LED state one is turned to high. Now, while LED state one is high, it's going to read all the rest of the buttons. And if the second button is pushed, then it's also going to turn the second button or second LED high and check the set and set the second LED state high as well. If a different button's pushed, three, four, five, or six, it's instead going to turn off all the lights and break the loop. While the second LED is lit, read the other buttons. And if button three is pushed, then you again turn it on, turn the, the LED state for button three on. And then if 
any others are pushed, then it's going to instead turn all of the lights off again. I'm just gonna step through doing the same thing in sequence so that buttons one, two, three, four, five, and six are all gonna be checked. And if the incorrect sequence pushed, all the lights turn off. If the correct sequence is pushed, they'll all remain lit. Finally, when the last button is lit, I'm gonna initiate a sequence which blinks all the LEDs on and off three times. In order to do that, I'm simply going to use digital writes with a delay and turn them all low, turn them all high, etc., alternating through. The last bit of code to pay attention to is at the very end, a while loop that's created while LED state six is high, which is where you're gonna put your trigger for your function if you want to add any additional functionality to the puzzle. This is where you'd initiate a signal to open a door or turn on a light or create another clue somewhere down the chain of your escape room. Now it's time to try it out. I'm gonna show what happens if you try the button, it doesn't work, and then I'm simply gonna push the sequence to make sure that all my lights are working and it blinks on and off as it should when the puzzle is completed successfully. Next, in order to change the puzzle up, I'm gonna show you that all you need to do is change the values of this instead of changing the terminals on the LED button. Here's the layout of the buttons along with the terminals being used for the switch in green and for the light in red. I'm simply gonna change the values now to match the location that I want to be lit up and change both the button and the LED to match so that we won't have weird combinations where you push one button and a different LED lights up. Now I upload that to the Arduino and it's time to test it out and see what the new sequence is. As you can see, now this is the new sequence that I've programmed just by changing a few values. Next, I'm gonna simulate what it would look like in a wall or mount it in some other kind of uh, wall or panel. And you can see what it looks like. I glued it in place. And then here's a picture hanging that you might pull off to reveal the puzzle hidden behind. And there it is, ready to try out in place. And once again, seeing what it would be like to actually try out the logic of it all and figure out what's happening in this puzzle as you try to figure out what it means and how to solve it. So now you see how you can take a few buttons you can buy online, mix them together with some electronics experience and Arduino, and out comes a brand new puzzle that you probably haven't seen before in any escape room. It can be combined with other clues to open a door or trigger some other kind of effect. There's just countless ways that you could use something like this in your own DIY escape room project. I hope you liked the videos that we're making. If you do, please consider subscribing, tell your friends and family about it, Support us by letting us know in the comments what we could be doing better or projects you'd like to see in the future. And until next time, in all your DIY projects, even those you wish you could escape from, don't be afraid to be balder.